How's everyone doing? I'm back again for another reaction video. And, uh, you know, I was supposed to do either one of two options. Either it's an evil enough film or the next Ma Matrix film. And I went, no, I'm going to do The Lighthouse. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to do The Lighthouse now. Uh, I just got this urge to watch it again. And I was like, hey, why don't I do a reaction video for it? And, uh... This is my second favorite movie, as I'm speaking right now. Um, that may change, you know, a year from now, I don't know. But as of right now, this is my second favorite movie. Um, it's got a lot of similar traits to actually my first favorite movie in certain aspects. Um, one being a horror. My favorite movie, if you want to know, is The Shining. Okay, The Shining. I'll definitely do a video on that movie at some point too. But, you know, the way this movie's shot, the way it's filmed, there's a lot of aspects of this that makes you go... Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Um, it's got some kind of Stanley Kubrick, you know, cinematography kind of and things like that. But this movie is just really great. It's weird. It's funny. And it's kind of scary just how strange and <laughs> bizarre it is. But it's a very atmospheric film. Like the, you really get the setting, you know, what they're in. And you really feel the atmosphere that they're going for. It's a really well-crafted movie. Um, the director is Robert Eggers, and I, I do like this guy, Robert Eggers. I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, so, yeah, he did this, and then he also did The Witch. Now, I think The Witch is pretty good. I, I think it's pretty damn good, but it's nowhere near as good as, as this. I don't even think The Witch is in my top 10 favorite movies. It's probably in, like, my top 50, maybe. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but this is, this is something else. At least for me, this is something else. I, I really like this movie. Um, yeah, and without any further ado, let's get started. I'm really keen to watch this again. <laughs> Alright, so let's do this. I thought it starts off with music straight away. Or a sound. Apparently it's quiet. Unless I've got something not plugged in, right? I have seen this movie, I think, three times now. So this is my fourth viewing of this film. So, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> it's unfortunate I didn't see it in the theatre. There was no... Nah, here we go. There's the music. But yeah, this is like my fourth viewing of it. I wish I could have seen this in the cinema, but unfortunately I just didn't get to see it there because there was no way of seeing it there. Oh, I love the foghorn. Like, that really adds to the atmosphere this movie's going for. And the old music, the old dramatic music, so fitting. And, uh, this aspect ratio really works. Like, it really works for what they're going for, because one, it gives the old film look, and then, secondly, it really enhances that, like, claustrophobic, you know, tone that they're going for. I love this shot, too, how the, you see the ship just appearing out of the fog, like, that's really well done. Hmm. These are some great shots. Close up of the boat. Two main characters, the back of them, and the little rowboat. It's really nice frames, like, that's got some it's kind of symmetrical. See, that's something Kubrick films, you know, have. Stanley Kubrick. I love this shot. How, like, they're right up on the top of the frame. And then the cliff takes up the majority of the shot. Like, it really gives a sense of how high up they are, you know, cliffs. And how, you know, far of a fall that is. I don't know, it's just a really interesting frame. I really like that. They're almost looking, like, directly at the camera lens here. Of the, the ship going away, I guess. Uh, did Willem Dafoe realise he had his pipe upside down? Maybe that's normal, I, I don't know. I've never seen that before, someone had the pipe, like, the other way. He doesn't want to get the rain or salt in the uh, thing. Very precise camera movements, like, as soon as he walked, the camera moved. So it's very Kubrick and also a bit of David Fincher in that sense. Very patient camera shots too, which I like as well. There's a lot of cuts, it's very... Like this, now it's going to a uh, side on tracking shot. That's really cool. Like they probably did put a sneaky cut in there since it was dark, but still, it's the intent that's there. Like these nice continuing shots to really put you in this setting. You know, I really like that um, technique. This is still the one shot, by the way. Like this is insane. <laughs> that's really cool that they're just keeping it in this one top. Now they finally cut. It's really cool. 
I feel like that noise would get really annoying. Probably you'd get used to it, but still. Man, you could have waited until you went a little bit further to, to let your load out. But no, you had to do it right there as you leave the room. It's like it just said goodbye to him in a, in a fart. See, I have this rule now whenever I watch movies. Until, uh, until further notice. I think that's usually what I say. Yeah. So, I never say you cannot do a certain technique. Because there's always an exception to the rule, I feel like. See, fart humor usually is unnecessary. You don't need to do it, right? This is that weird shit with the mermaid. Uh, maybe I'll have a more understanding of it this viewing. Or not. But anyway, back to what I was saying before with the fart humor. Most movies that would do that, I'd absolutely hate it. It would be annoying. It's childish. But this movie somehow pulled it off. I don't know how. Somehow he made that work. <laughs> <I t> <laughs> He made fart humor work. Like, usually that's some crap in, like, an Adam Sandler movie or something, you know? But they made it work here. I really like it that they give this sense of the one light source, that, that um, light in the center of the table. And that's all there is. For this reason, I tainted I am. I don't understood it's against regulations. Or... Did you? I did, sir, from... Uh... From them's manual. Big picture, you. These really two man. actors are so good. I really love Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. They, they are so great in this film. Um, Robert Pattinson has really changed for me. Like, you know, Twilight. I was like, God, this guy's awful. And he has completely redeemed himself with, like, Good Time. And then this film, I think there's something else I've seen him in. Anyway, these are the two that really stand out to me. So, Good Time and in this movie... And then lastly, I, I'm all for him playing the Batman now. He, he, I totally believe that he can do it. I totally believe he can pull it off. Because he's just such a great actor. Like, he's got a personality to his performance that's so good. I don't know. And then Willem Dafoe, Willem mm -hmm. Dafoe. Like, oh, come on. He's great. You tidy up the quarters after. There's well more to be mended outside. I like the... Uh, the dialogue in this too. That was something that I still wasn't all for at times with, with The Witch. Like sometimes I was just like too much of like, say that again. Like I just didn't get it, you know. But this, maybe these actors just pull it off better. I'm not sure. Walk through the dog watch. Dog in it. Well, I was expecting to get up to see the lantern. I tend to light. Setting some, setting some boundaries now. I tend to light. No one else. You don't want to, you know, switch things up and, you know, change the things to not go crazy. My watch. Night to morning. No, the light's yours? Alright, fine. Damn. Gives him all the shitty jobs, right? Oh, that actually is a little bit loud. That got to my ear. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I totally get you. And then, cool shot, like, slowly sliding up the whole, um, lighthouse. It's pretty neat. See, very atmospheric, very ominous, like these nice, like, camera movements. It gives a very great tone to the setting and certain uneasiness, you know. The noises, oh man. I didn't even know, like, to give a point to the music or the sounds, or just give it to both. You know, fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna give it to both. They do a lot of, um, doing a full black frame and then revealing the next shot by like panning out from it. I notice they do that a lot in this film. It does work, it really gives a nice slow build throughout the film. Hmm. Hitting back to his whole um, past and all the troubles, he's, all the guilt he's built up, things he's trying to suppress, it's all coming back to haunt him. I really like this whole underlying tone and making you question what's real, what's a dream. You know, are they hallucinating? Is this actually happening? You know, I really like how they blend all that stuff. And then just mermaid or a siren, whatever. Jeez. Even the sound design of that, like the, the mermaid, is just haunting. Like it's just so uneasy. I feel like this camera angle really makes you feel the weight of that thing he's carrying, you know. 
maybe someone can tell me what this stuff is. Like, I have no idea what he's actually tending to here. Like, the goopy shit they show in a second. I, I, I don't know what that is, but anyway. They put some ominous music behind it, nonetheless. Like, hmm. Really, um, even though it's a very small location, I really like the wide shots they still do. Like this shot here, I'm pushing the wheelbarrow. I wonder if this is the same sea coal that keeps fucking with them. I think it's meant to be. I'll give that sense that it is. This is one stubborn bastard, isn't it? No, you some bitch. Hey, I love this camera movement, like, over to the lighthouse. With Defoe just watching him going, what the fuck you doing to that bird? Bad luck to kill a seabird. Oh, yo. And realizing now that, like, what he's doing here is a complete waste of time. Like, he did it to try and, I think, go up to the light, and the foe stops him, but yo, man. Like, that persistence to go all the way up and then realize this was a fucking waste of time. Holy shit. Oil's tired. Use this next time. Save you a little lot of trouble. Catch your breath, lad. I said, catch your breath, lad. Then bring that drum back down the ladder where we have found it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's fucked. Holy shit. Rest your duties. You're behind and already. Aye, sir. You're too slow. You a dullard? No, sir. Fooled me. So basically he's calling him uh, the R word, right? There. Night, the brace of us will be wanting to be ever silent as the tomb. Oh, I ain't much for talking. Reckon you're the first. No, sir, I don't. You ain't. You ain't. I think Willem Dafoe really pulls off the dialogue. Like, just, just perfect. Like, Robert Pattinson's great, don't get me wrong, he's really good too. But I think he really does a great job at just pulling off the dialogue and the time period. He does an excellent job. Of a sailor's life, ask you lad. Is when I'll mention this now. I, I cannot imagine this movie not being in black and white. Like if this was in colour, it wouldn't work. I feel like this film would not work. Like if I saw someone saying, oh, this is a coloured version of The Lighthouse. I'd be like, get that shit out of here. <laughs> like for real. For real, I love that this is in black and white. It, it totally fits. It fits brilliantly. I think this is the first movie where I'm like, this absolutely deserves to be in black and white. Like, it's perfect. In the end, weren't no more sense left in him than an hen's tooth. <laughs> what a weird bit of dialogue than a hen's tooth. <laughs> and Elmore had cast his very fire into it. I love how the, the wind starts getting more, you know, dramatic as he's talking about this shit. I seen you sparring with a gull. Hmm. Best leave him be. Bad luck to kill a seabird. <laughs> I really like how he says it. Just bad luck. Bad luck to kill a seabird. <laughs> I love that big looming shadow that he gets, like, in that shot. That's really cool. Yeah, he... If that's the same damn bird, he's asking for it. Let's be real. He's asking for it. <laughs> hmm. I really like how you see a shadow in the on the um yeah, in the back of the shed there. Sir? What? Hmm. I, I mopped and swept twice over. Yeah, lion dog. He loves calling him that. Calling him a dog. It's a really good long shot too, of him just saying that whole bit. There's parts in this movie that kind of reminds me of like a play. Like the dialogue and the way the camera shots are so long, it feels almost like a stage, you know? He's just chilling back with his goddamn book. <laughs> 
Oh, I like how this camera movement is too. It like keeps moving backwards. And even when he starts losing his pace, the camera keeps moving that same speed. You watch. Like when his shit keeps falling, the camera keeps going back. I really like that. It's kind of showing he's running out of time. <laughs> he's... It's not working out for him. Give them sailors a proper day, Mark. They're not gonna see it. I say fuck that. You'd have to pay me a lot of money to do that. With that, especially with that dodgy contraption that's holding him there. Easy! Quit your flailing, lad! I ain't! Yar! Keep still! I am! <laughs> well, at least he got lowered a little bit. So it ain't so bad, but still. <laughs> Damn, there he is again. Oh, he's got an eye missing. Huh. Jesus. He's trying to eat him. Saying some bullshit in that logbook, is he? This is a really nice long shot too, damn. Like, they're, they're very sneaky, like these nice um, camera shots. You don't even notice how long the camera is going for. It's really well done. Can't say I blame you. Yeah, see? The camera shot is still going, even over this different angle. See, that's what you, why you don't notice it, is because it just moves to different compositions, you know, and that's why you don't notice that the camera's going for so long. It's really well done, very sneaky. I think it helps that the actors are so good too and so engaging. There we go, there was a cut there, still. Keep moving along. I ain't the kind of look back what's behind him, see? On the run. Now look here. Ain't nothing wrong with the man starting fresh, starting new. Yeah, he's getting a bit defensive here, you know, because of he's trying to hide something. He is kind of drilling him, but still. That's the horn thing, isn't it? You wouldn't want that thing to go off with him right there. It's a very simple, I feel, but effective soundtrack. Like, extremely um, atmospheric, but works really well. This is when shit gets real weird with this whole part. I'm pretty sure this is when you see like this weird fucking octopus shit in the um, light. Yeah. Oh, yo, this is like... This is, this is... <laughs> some weird ass oh shit. I think they try to catch some like mythology in it with the whole like ocean god things and stuff like that. I don't know a lot about that stuff, but they kind of do bring it up throughout the film too. Oh. That don't look normal. They really got those seagulls going. I wonder if they sometimes use CG for that. I wouldn't be surprised if they did CGI for the seagulls. Unless they just actually always had them around, which I... Ugh. That one got messed up in that stuff. And this is when... You, 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 you caught him on the wrong day. <laughs> you caught him on the wrong day, man. I really love this one shot too, how the camera just kind of slowly goes around as he's beating the fuck out of this gull. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think it's dead, man. It's dead as fuck. This is a cool shot too. Yeah, it goes up to the top of the lighthouse. There's you. There's your bad luck to kill a seabird right there. You fucked up the wind current. <laughs> Wind's changed. Yes, it has. <laughs> Could just use a hand with them boards as well. It's nice he actually gave him a hand. Like, throughout this whole thing, he either just barks orders at him, or fucking just holds a book and just stares at him. Or oh, does this, just tells him to pull on shit without any help. <laughs> Should pale death and treble dread. <laughs> Well, nope, he couldn't say it. He ain't Willem Dafoe. <laughs> My friend Tom. I'm getting off this goddamn rock. 
Mm, yeah, about that lads. That ain't the case. Once again, really cool, like, long camera shot. The shot started all the way back from when he was... Oh, that that was just one long shot for that, that um, scene. Oh, yo, dude, this is... Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> See, that's as Wesley wins. All that shit in his face. Oh, my God. Yeah, get that... Put your head in the way and just wash that shit off. Oh my god, he's just wearing it. He's like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah, it looks like that camera's just been placed on the ground and just pointed upright. Oh. You thought the tentacle ship was weird with the... Yeah, shit's gonna get real weird. Gets real weird real quick. I, just, I love how the sound goes very faint, like you don't hear the rain anymore, you just hear like this slight droning noise and the foghorn, that's it. Jeez. I think I had run too. What are you splitting your lungs for? You smell of shit. Let's swab this mess No shit, he smells come. like shit. <laughs> oh man. I wonder how long they'll stand in there waiting. For that boat, like, come on, it's gotta be here soon. It's gotta be here soon. Nope. Yeah, okay, that's some storm clouds, isn't it? Bloody hell. Oh, it's just darkness in the sky. <laughs> they didn't come. Hmm, no shit, they didn't come. I like how this shot this time is further away from them at the table, like, showing a sense of hope. They're like, oh shit, we're gonna be here for a while. What? What do you mean, what? Weeks, weeks, I have weeks. He slept in, dead drunk. It's been weeks ago since we missed our Winslow. Oh my god, I love this bit. Because it, it could be a little bit of um, Willem Dafoe just fucking with him. You know, just, I don't know. I don't know why he would at this point. I feel like he was being real then. But it's like, it really makes you think now. Like, the sense of time is just gone and i really love that concept i really love this part of the film where it's like oh my god it's quite a scary thought just being stranded in one location so this is the whole thing like kind of like the shining as well like even though they weren't straight like i guess they were kind of stranded there but they weren't like there for like longer than what they thought it was still long enough for jack torrance to go insane but it's still that concept of being stuck like in one location is still um a thing here I love that shot too, where that long panning shot as they go into the next location. It really gives a sense to how small the location is, where they can like pan like that. So we get upon the grass, and twas that scurvy what left me locked ever since. I thought you said you broke it. Hey, the leg. Mm. Catholic nuns and such like. You must have misheard. I mean, Willem Dafoe does that character throughout at times, like he says different stories sometimes, so you don't kind of know what's true and what's not. Trouble dudes eating grass without no teeth. <laughs> what does that mean? Eating grass without no teeth? Oh, I love it. What? Oh, this bit's great. The camera just slowly dollying in on them, just saying what? 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 I love this I part with uh, Robert Pattinson, oh my god. This steak, you would fuck it. You're fond of me lobster, ain't you? Yeah, there we go. Like, you thought his rage was something. It, it ain't shit compared to what Lum Dafoe does. Say it. It's like a child in the corner, like, no. Say nothing. Damn you! <laughs> Let Neptune strike you dead, Winslow! Oh! And the thunder and shit, oh my god, it's so good. Oral time trident screeches banshee-like in the tempest. 
and plunges right through your gullet! Damn. I think there's a very nice, um... <laughs> oh there's a really nice slow camera movement up to his face, too. With this shot, too. Now your soul is Winslow no more, but is now itself the sea. This <sighs> cuts to this wide shot. All right, have it your way. Nah, he says that a few I times like in the movie. You're gonna argue with that, like that's nuts. <laughs> It makes me wonder how long they've been there for now. Like, because it's been a bit of time now. So it makes me wonder the time. Yeah, I really love the track of time in this film. Like, they never really tell you. And I think that's kind of great in a sense of, like, gives that fear of, like, the unknown. This movie is kind of like the fear of the unknown. Like, you don't exactly know what's going on in this movie. It's just batshit insane. That you can speculate and go, you know, he's just, just losing his mind. Or we can also think, you know, it's also a mix of, like, the the gods and mythology and stuff like that. <laughs> Slightly creeping up. <laughs> All lanky and shit. Hmm. Another nice camera movement there where it like, just squawked over to where the keys are. I guess this was like a different set of sorts because like behind them there was the wall and obviously they couldn't have the camera there So I'm guessing they're in an entirely different like the walls not there at the moment because otherwise the camera wouldn't be able to be there Oof. That's a great close-up of the eye there. It's so good. Let's find some links before the day draws farther on oh, There's those farts again you could see those farts that get doing like look at his face. <laughs> you only told her when you're drunk. Get to work, says I. To work. That smile. Oh my god. You don't fuck with someone when they look like that. Like it's just you know something's not right. Like this video. It's like Jack Torrance when he's starting to lose his mind. <laughs> Oh, this is where I love his performance. He kind of reminds me a bit of Nicolas Cage sometimes, which is how crazy he gets. There's a cool camera movement over the top of all the machinery stuff. Wow. I really love how they edit this bit. Like, they go to this, and then they cut to this part. Even though it's fucking weird. And then they cut back to... Well, that. No, yeah, I really love how this is edited. That scream, oh my god. Ugh. <laughs> Kill that mermaid. <laughs> Doof. Jeez, I love how this bit's edited. Because there's barely many parts like this in the film where there's a lot of cuts. Right, this will be the most... <laughs> it cuts to this. Oh my god. Let me go. Oh gosh, look at, oh my god, spitting it out and shit. Oh my god, this bit's so great. These two characters now kind of have bonding in a sense. They, um, I really do like the chemistry they have, even though they argue a lot, bicker a lot, but they do, even when they are doing that stuff, arguing and all that stuff, I really do like the chemistry these two actors have in the film. I think they work really well. And they're just like, that was, that was like, that was close. This movie was about to change real quick. This movie was about to change into, um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire or something, but a male version. <laughs> if you have not seen that movie, that movie is amazing. 
highly recommend it. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Interesting. Don't be spilling any of your beans to me. Oh, here we go. Don't be working twist words out of my head. Right. You're doing this shit yourself. <laughs> he is not messing with you this time. You're just, you're doing this. I think it's one of those things with guilt like that or having something like this weighing on you. You can't hold it in. At some point, you're going to spill it. You know, no matter how strong you think you are, I think at some point you're going to, even if it's, you know, on your deathbed, you will let it out, I feel like, at some point. Or, as I said, when you're drinking alcohol or something, it's going to spill out. So, you know, don't do anything stupid. That you're going to, you know, that's going to be bad in the long run. Especially killing someone. Don't do that. <laughs> Jam coming. And I stood and he slipped. He shouted up and I, I just stood there. Tom, you dog. I wonder if he calls him a dog after this, after him hearing what he did here. I wonder if he ever calls him a dog after this point. Why just spill your beans, Tommy? Hmm. Very haunting. This bit with him just saying that and then the very eerie music. Hmm. It's a nice shot too. Why just spill your beans? Yeah. And his eyes are like lights. It almost looks like a painting almost. It's really, even though it's very freaky kind of look and it's, um, yeah, it kind of looks like a painting really. Oh, yo, this bit. This gives me some um, shining vibes, that's for sure, with the axe and everything. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get far with that boat nonetheless anyway. He's just going to die with those waves and shit. He's just going to get thrown straight back or... It flips over and he drowns. One or the other. Like these shots here particularly remind me of the shining. This like the chase. Like look at that. <laughs> and he's limping too, which was what Jack Torrance was doing when he was chasing Danny. <laughs> They're abandoning your post. Oh, the table's pretty strong, didn't <laughs> just collapse. This is a shot like from earlier, but now the place is all messed up, <laughs> leaking and shit, stuff everywhere. You mean the man with the charm? Hmm. Clothes are trinket. Well, I broke. See? See? Now I'm free. Now I'm free from your designs. I don't know, man, from that reaction. I, 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 I don't think you're free. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> and I knew you was mad when you smashed up that lifeboat just now and chasing oh, me with an axe to Tom. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Hmm, I'm wondering that too. It's definitely not two days, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Help me to recollect. Who are you again, Tommy? I'm probably a figment of your imagination. No, oh, come on, don't fuck with him like that. He's already losing it. We're out of drink. Oh, you're in trouble now. What the hell do they have now? Is it like oil for the lamp? Oh my goodness. And then like, what is that, honey? Wow. That's some strong shit. And they're equally losing it now. <laughs> I wonder what would have sent them insane quicker, without alcohol or with alcohol? <laughs> Far out. <laughs> yeah, they've done a great job at maintenance and caring for the building, that's for sure. <laughs> when you think it couldn't get any worse inside that place. It's just flooded. This place is a sky. Mmm. Yes, you're right. I wish I could go for a walk. Be my guest. You'll get drowned. <laughs> Come on, aim. Aim. 
aim. You're off, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's from that that oil you've been consuming. Hmm. Oh, this is the logbook. Yeah. It's cool how that bit was revealed. Taking a piss and then he finds this. This is all in one shot once again. No, we go, there was a cut there. Already told me you had me figured. I'm tired of your damn fool yarns. I love this bit of um, Robert Patson just losing his shit again. Laughing, snoring. Here we go. Goddamn farts! <laughs> God damn! God damn farts! <laughs> Smell like jism. Oh. Like rotten dick. Like like curdled foreskin. Oh. Like hot onions. Fuck the farmyard shit house. <laughs> mm. This is a good shot too, starting from that wide and then going all the way over here to the book. Assault! Theft! <laughs> he keeps throwing the papers at him. Pay? Servants without pay! I'm surprised he didn't just throw the whole book at him. Stand down. Willem Dafoe has to be careful because like Robert Pattinson could whoop his ass because he's an old dude, you know, unless he's got some martial arts on him under his belt, which I don't think he does. Will you kill me like you done that girl? I did! Liar! You murdering dog! Yeah, he was lying about that, that's right. What damn dust dog was ye? He called him a dog again. Right. Thomas, you're a dog! A oh, filthy no. dog! A oh, dog! You're asking for it. You, you... <laughs> now it's the siren messing with him. Definitely a good portion of this is psychological, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah. Whooping his ass. I really thought the only supernatural somewhat element in this is when he killed the seagull. Like everything else you could explain it as psychological in like Robert Pattinson's perspective. That was the only thing that really changed anything um, psycholog um, um, in, a, in a supernatural sense was that goal. Black. Oh gosh. Now he's making him the dog, literally. Ain't you never been to see you before? Back, I said, back! Changes his voice and everything when he was yelling at him then. Hmm, this is a good shot too. The camera kind of goes pretty good, like long take, I'm pretty sure. It's not many movies you see that do that type of thing, like really nice long shots. And then yeah, it tracks him as he's going up the hill now too. Yeah, I remember the other shot was pretty damn good. Really patient cinematography. That's why it reminds me a bit of like Kubrick sometimes. There's barely any handheld in this film, like the camera is very smooth, you know, very, um, not much jitteriness at all. Since that part from the house, it went all the way from to there to over here. And now it's still going. It's still going. What the hell? Like, when you really think about it, this is freaking nuts. Now, maybe they might have snuck a cut in somewhere, I don't know. But that's really crazy. Stay blind. Get in it. See. Oh, I was waiting for that when the dirt gets in his mouth. Oh, oh, jeez, it's messed up just burying him alive like that. I feel like with anything, like there's no going back now for Robert Pattinson's character. Like he has completely lost the plot. Like I, he'd have to go through some years of psychological therapy, and back then they would just, I think they would just kill him. <laughs> they wouldn't be bothered. Oof. Damn. Should have gone for the head. You should have gone for the head. Oh. 
Oh, this is a crazy one shot too, isn't it? Even though you don't see him, get, like his face get crushed, that's enough. Like, th that's cool. I didn't need to see it. <laughs> but what a swing that was, just one arm just... It's really cinematic, really well done. You just don't see many movies like this today, like where they're... Instead of cutting to a closer shot, like they probably would have went from that shot back before and then just cut to a close up to this. But instead they just keep it in this nice long shot going towards him. And that's one of the big reasons why I like it so much is just the way it's filmed is like brilliant. Oh gosh, he's just drinking it straight now. I mean, he ain't, as I said, he ain't, he ain't coming back from this. Like psychologically, it would take, take a, a reset, <laughs> a hard reset on his brain to to come back from this. I have to say, it looks cool looking. Like the way the light thing looks with all the different patterns and everything. It looks almost like alien or something, you know? It almost looks like a little rocket ship. <laughs> Personally, I feel like there's really nothing there. It's just Willem Dafoe had a thing for lights. <laughs> you know, he just had a thing for looking into this bright light. I don't really know if it has anything crazy, you know, supernatural in a sense with that light. I mean, if it does, it if it does, it does, it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't think it really makes a difference at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of, a lot of the stuff in regards to Robert Pattinson's character is just psychological. Oh, and how the sound peaks. It's so, oh, it's very haunting, the sound design. And now it's like the exposure is like really bright and everything. Right back down to the bottom. I really like that they didn't show it because it does leave it up to your interpretation of like, was there anything there? Was there? It's not, you know, I think it's more haunting to somewhat fear the unknown and, or in a sense, make your own assumption of what you think. Oh. And he's so broken, he can't do a damn thing about it. Because I don't think he's like, dead just yet. In an in-between there. Like he's like, he's just so done he can't move, but he's just getting slowly pecked away. That's messed up. Damn. That is a lighthouse. Oh, I love the credits music. Wow. Um, so yeah, as I said, I feel like... Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> because, like, the whole mermaid thing, like, that slipped into his mind very quickly. Or, as we think very quickly, like, we don't know how many days they were there when he started hallucinating of the mermaid. Was that, like, literally that night when he saw it like the little um the little thing of her the little model thing or whatever like did he see that the first night or because like the whole passage of time in this film is kind of skewed especially at one point so i don't know if like he saw that the first night he slept or if that's like a few weeks after after he kept looking at it and since he had nothing else to think about except for you know the lighthouse and and things like that and and his guilt it was just those two things you could really think of because it's such a small location. There's really not much that's going to be on your mind, you know. Um, so that could be another explanation to it is like, that was just passage of time. It wasn't that thing in a sense that, that um, made him hallucinate of that. It was just a sense of like his guilt piled up and then just, you know, being in that same location for so long and not being able to think of much else, it, it affected him mentally. Um, I don't know, it's one of those things, or you could see it as a more of a thing, like that was a cursed thing, you know, it was a cursed object, and that caused him to flare up his solution, hallucinations more and more, you know, to a point where he, he, he lost it, you know. Um, I really do like this movie in a sense of just how it makes you question it, you know, and then you can go into the whole God things and all that stuff, and the mythology stuff, things like that, because that's kind of like what the, his previous movie was about, The Witch, and things like that back in that time. Um, <clears throat> like that movie could almost be explained in a psychological sense too, except for like the very end. So then it makes you question, is that part real? You know, is that, you know, just her kind of losing it? 
or is it real? You know, it kind of leaves it up to you. That movie, I feel like it's a bit more literal, like she does become a witch in the end. But a lot of that movie does feel psychological, and that's interesting too, and, and along with this movie. So this director does a great job with that, um, with that tone. I really do like this one, how I think it's intentionally meant to be funny in places. Like, the performances are so exaggerated in parts. It some, kind of feels like an old movie, but it's still it still gets me involved in it. Like, I still get emotionally um, affected by it in the, the scary standpoint and also just being entertained and kind of having a laugh at it. Like, I think it was intentional, like, the actual, the humour, you know, like, sometimes Robert Pattinson's performance and him losing it. I, I feel like it's meant to be kind of funny. Um, I, I really do like his performance in this and Willem Dafoe's. I think they're both just incredible actors in this film. And then, as I said, along with that, as I mentioned throughout this film, the, the visuals in this movie are fantastic. It reminds you a lot of an older film, even with the aspect ratio, the black and white, and just, as I said, the overall cinematography has a nice flow to it, like the shots. When you really think about it, you, you're watching it, and if you, you think about how long the shot's been going for you, you go, holy shit, this has been like a, a long take, and it, it just, you know, did it so well. And because of the staging, and then the actors, and then the way the camera just slowly moves into new shots and you know and it doesn't actually cut to a new frame it just kind of stays the same shot but it just moves around you don't even notice and it's just so well done how they do that um, it's very uh, sneaky of them <laughs> but done really well so I felt like this director knew I feel like this director had a specific vision in his head of how he wanted it to be shot that's kind of how I feel um, which is how it feels like a Stanley Kubrick film as well, because I feel like that's how he he did his stuff. Was it was very intentional and very purposeful in regards to how the shots were done. And then because of that, the editing felt so good. And then like in that part, as I was saying when he was pulling that that thing out of the water, I kind of didn't really extend on this after the fact because I got sidetracked of them dancing around. But what I was going to say after that fact is, is this scene's probably got the most amount of cuts in it than any scene in the entire film. Because otherwise the movie, as I said, is very patient. Like the shots do linger for a, for a fair amount of time, but it doesn't feel like it because of just the tension it's built up, because of the, the actors are so good at capturing you. You know, I feel like all those things, um, like those two things and probably even more things that I'm not even thinking of right now, just the general beauty of the shots, you know, you get so immersed in it that you don't even notice that the shots are going for so long. Um, and it creates a certain, and because of that, it creates a certain immersion, I feel, into this setting and into this, um, film. So yeah, I thought it was really well done, just really expertly done, and, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing another film by this director. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this wasn't a very high-budget film, too, like, this is probably, like, let, let's have a look, but it didn't need it, like, they, they, they did it so, well, expertly. Yeah, 11 million dollars, like, this wasn't a huge high budget film, just above $10 million, and it's done so well, like, as I said, it's got somewhat the charm of an old movie, in a sense of, like, some things, I, I can't think of a spot that looks particularly fake, but even if there was, it would be like, oh, well, it's getting that old movie vibe, you know, so it doesn't really matter so much, but yeah, so this is why that's my second favourite movie as of right now, because it, in a sense, there's so many aspects of it that I like in it, that the Shining has, you know, there's so many aspects, editing, cinematography, camera movements, tracking shots, the, the music, and the sound design, like that, that, this movie has a really cool clash of both in regards to how the music and sound design works, it kind of blends into each other, I really like how that was done in this, but like, along with that, the acting is top notch, they pull off dramatic moments well, they pull off humorous moments well, they have great chemistry, so even the actors, there's so many points I can just give to the actors, and I'd even give a point to the line delivery, like, the dialogue in this movie is very out there, you know, it's very, um, old-timey setting, and it's, it was executed so well, I think it was better executed than The Witch, because as I said, with The Witch, I kind of, at times, were like, say that again? But this one, I felt like that wasn't an issue. Perhaps these actors pulled off the lines better, I'm not sure, but it was just, it so that, and along with that, the dialogue's great, like, the, um, oh, there's so many aspects here, like, just off the top of my head, it's you know, open to interpretation, as I was saying. There's just so much. So yeah, that's it for this video. Put your comments down below. And um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this film. Positive, negative, some theories you have. Do you believe more on the, in the psychological standpoint? Or do you believe more in the, um, 
the supernatural stuff or do you or you kind of like in the middle you know i'm kind of in the middle but i'm more lean towards the psychological like the only thing i think is a little bit weird is the whole wind changing or maybe this is very just symbolic you know maybe it's just very symbolic it's not meant to be taken too literally it's very metaphorical you know that could be it too it's just a lot of themes and things like that it's not meant to be taken too literally that could be also what you can get from it as well anyway so that's it for this video thanks for watching and um yeah hope to see you in the next one bye bye